Burning Sins, Chapter 2, Part 3. What were you thinking? Shining Armor reeled back at the harsh roaring of his newlywed's voice. Cadence was positively livid. Or, well, no, she was more than that. She was downright infuriated. I told you he was no longer a threat to us! He was just laying there in the grass completely immobilized! There wasn't even a need to use the shackles anymore from how badly you hurt him! Cadence, honey, please, you know how dangerous they are. How many ponies have lost their lives to that hive? How many mothers mourn their children or sons crying over the loss of their parents? Eliminating the threats to Canterlot even after Chrysalis' defeat should have been the top priority for the remaining citizens' safety. I... <sighs> Cadence wiped a hand down her face, taking a slow breath to calm herself as several guards flew off after the injured changeling. Twilight even sent Rainbow Dash with them, hoping her speed would be enough to catch up and bring the devastated mortal back for medical attention. Shining Armor, I understand completely. You have a duty to protect this kingdom as captain of the Royal Guard. But I highly doubt Royal Guard training taught you to do that to a supposed threat that isn't even fighting back. Despite everything, we need to take him into custody for interrogation. What would happen if there are more like him sulking about Canterlot right now? We could have gathered extremely important intelligence not only on them, but on the Changeling Hive altogether. She gave him a heated glare as she pointed to her head. Thank Shiny, thank! Now with your assault on the Changeling, we'll have to expand resources to keep it alive. Medical equipment and medicine we should be using on the brave soldiers and guards who participated in the skirmish on the streets. Shining Armor remained silent, opening his mouth to say something, only for it to close when he had nothing to review that. Cadence was right. Shining Armor had taken it one step too far, and did more harm than good. He knew he wasn't okay, he wasn't right, but at this point, he could, and couldn't, blame himself. The experiences he went through had taken their toll. And while the after-party settled his nerves slightly, seeing this new changeling put him in red alert. That alone forced him out of his right mind. Closing his eyes and looking away in shame, Cadence's stern glare melted into concern and pity. Maybe we should get you looked at. The castle psychiatrist can help you get checked out. I doubt you'll be returning to your duties after tonight anyways. Both of them glanced towards the royal sisters, the elder solar monarch looking off in the direction the changeling was shot to, and worry while the younger lunar princess was giving him a look of disappointment. No. No, Shining Armor was indeed not going back on duty anytime soon, and that was evident when the guards and Rainbow Dash returned without the changeling. Princess Celestia closed her eyes as Luna widened hers. They both shared some odd sense of discomfort as they dismissed the guards, and ordered a few to escort Cadence and Shining Armor back inside. As they went, Shining Armor looked back at the hole in the wall, taking a breath to steady himself as he marched with his fellow guards. His wife stayed by his side, wrapping an arm around his and keeping close to comfort him. As much trouble as he was in, he needed some pony to stay at his side, and Cadence wasn't going to leave him. Not now. And not ever again. Princess Luna watched the crowd disperse, a large chunk of them staying near the damaged captain as they returned to the interior walls of the castle. Still giving him a harsh stare, the Princess of the Night had already begun calculating various punishments for his disrespect and clear disobedience to their orders. Such a fool. To go out of his way to strike down a defenseless Sumpony, even if they are one with the enemy. Celestia remained still, looking off in the same direction as she kept her eyes closed. The fault is not on his, Luna. The events of the last few days had taken an extreme toll on every pony. He alone shouldered the greatest pain that came from the Changeling's seduction. Luna shook her head as she took her place beside her sibling. <sighs> Even so, sister, he should have exercised a modicum of restraint. Executing a small brand of guardsman brutality is one thing, but brazenly disobeying direct orders from one high is a grievous crime. I will be lenient. Besides, we have more pressing things to worry about. Luna glanced up at Celestia then narrowed her eyes as she stared at the hole in the outer wall. 
Ah, uh, yes. Of all the threats Equestria has seen, I never expected to see this one again. Celestia opened her eyes, her gaze filled with disdain. A creature made of violence and endurance. A survivor with cunning intelligence and adaptability replacing strength, speed, and magic. A human. Both sisters let that name sink in. A human. This name belongs to creatures much like themselves. They're sapient beings who have built whole civilizations in the past generations ponies have been around. Not once has Equestria seen these great cities of humans, but every generation, a human would cross the Vale, and either share their knowledge, or aid in protecting the land from threats too great for ponykind alone. It all started the first time ponies were around. A young woman named Megan defeated a great many threats in those times, and as each generation passed, one human would come after her, taking the same dive she did. It seemed this generation was also graced with the presence of a human, but Princess Celestia had not expected to meet them in her own castle, much less after a great battle for the kingdom had already passed. Thus, she was unprepared for her subjects to mistake the human for a changeling and brutally attack him. This had all gone wrong, and would continue into a slippery slope of consequences if the sisters did not act. Princess Celestia prayed that even after all those wounds were afflicted to the human's body, they survived the fall to the rivers below. If a human has shown itself now, that would only mean another threat is rearing its ugly head so soon after the last. One other thought plagued her highness's mind as well. Documentation of humans had described them as extremely volatile. Many ponies look to each other and make choices based upon what this will do to the other. But that question is much more loaded when applying those choices to humans. They're not just friends in the making with emotions and beliefs of their own, but they're also a major threat if not handled properly. And judging from the look on her sister's face, both she and Luna were well aware that their subjects' lives are at danger. Not just the kingdom, not just their livelihoods, but their very existences could be snuffed out by death if nothing is done. To them, the next course of action was already chosen for them. They needed to find the human, or what remains of him. Alive or dead, in their arms, they would find relief in ensuring that they can't hurt anyone. Though they would very much prefer alive, as Ponykind has to make amends for a horrendous wrong they've done them tonight. Rain beat down on Nathan's body like bullets, hitting him like hail and stinging him like needles. The young man was battered and broken, yet alive. His consciousness had faded into slumber, and his exposed injuries were soggy and mudded. It was no secret that surviving the ordeal he did was nothing short of a miracle. By all means, he should be dead. Here he is, still bleeding out on the bank of a river, yet he still lives despite the amount of blood he lost and the grotesque maiming of his body. His chest heaved shallow or painfully long breaths, keeping air flowing through him as a wagon was pulling up on a dirt path not far off from the stream. A soft voice gasped as the wagon came to a stop, the wooden basket left behind momentarily while footsteps rushed towards him. Murmurs between the figure and another was indistinguishable in the heavy rain, but one was noticeably soft, and the other monotonous. We can't just leave him out here, he could die! We don't have the medical supplies to help him. Then we'll get a doctor to help! Big Sis can send a letter to Les Pegasus when we get back. I don't think Mom and Dad will approve. He doesn't have to stay long, just until he gets back on his feet. Please, Maud. A moment of silence passed between the two as they looked down at the human. After a brief period of time, a small bout of air escaped the second figure's nose. <sighs> Help me get him in the wagon, Marble. Jesus, that sucks. You just get Isaka into a world and then you get dicked on. But I guarantee you this guy's gonna have a harem. Anyways, let's get on to our romantic donators. Top donators, Jesse Smith, Zarsik Sardi, Badass Waffle, Only One Thing, Zero Ryan, and Calidus. Matchback, Jock, Lucio, Darkseid, Raiden, Runescythe, Will, Twinkie, Luigi, Chancer Crust, Big Smoke, Murder Princess, Little Mighty, Solar Symphony, many more amazing people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.